to think Epstein's island was holding such dark secrets, from secret underground tunnels to safes that no one is allowed near and strange screams coming from the shore, the infamous Little St. James seems to be not as empty as we are led to believe. Recently, many pieces of evidence have popped up claiming that Epstein's island is hiding many untold secrets underground. In today's video, we will go through all that we know about Little St. James and explore its hidden depths in detail. Take a seat and let's get started. Who is Jeffrey Epstein? Born on January 20th, 1953, Jeffrey Epstein was a bright student who graduated from high school at only the age of 16. But his dark side rose to the surface early in his career. He started off as a teacher of mathematics and physics at Dalton School, where a lot of young teens were fond of his good teaching style. But at the same time, there were reports of his misdemeanor. He used to arrive uninvited to high school parties, flirted with the young teens, and paid more attention to students than necessary. One brave girl came forward and made a complaint against Epstein and his inappropriate behavior with students. He was fired, but he had made connections with influential Dalton parents during various parent-teacher conferences. So despite getting fired, he had a job ready at Bear Stearns in 1976. It was a banking firm whose chairman was Alan Greenberg, a Dalton parent. Slowly but surely, Epstein made his way to the top. He got richer and richer until eventually he had enough to make his dark dreams come to life. And the first step for doing that? Buying a secluded island. Yes, the very same 75 acres Little St. James, located in the virgin states of the United States. Epstein bought the island for a whooping $7.95 million, and under his ownership, the place came to be known as the Island of the Sin to the world. The Island of the Sin. This island hosted so many horrifying and dark secrets that it remains a mystery to this date and we have managed to find a few slices of horror that you can piece together for yourself. As if not content with just one epicenter of evil, Epstein later bought the neighboring island, Great St. James, in 2016. These islands had many local nicknames, none of which had anything good to say about what happened over there. Both the islands were surrounded by crystal blue water and the sweet Caribbean air hitting the shore. A lot of houses line up at the beach far from the island, but close enough for the locals to spot the drastic changes taking place on the island after its acquisition by the new owner. The lush green land was stripped off and plants were removed. Instead, palm trees rising high into the air were installed near the edges of the island. Each palm tree was reported to be about $20,000 in worth. That's a lot of money. Was it to hide the island from the public view? That is what most allegations suggest. A huge structure was set up on one side of the island that was hidden from public view. But drone footage shows that it has a swimming pool, a gym, a helicopter pad, and various other smaller buildings to make up the huge complex. The only access to this secret lair was through the boat or by a private jet. This is of course by design. With no other way inside or outside the island, it becomes even harder to escape. And of course, it is near impossible for authorities to access the island as well. The most striking part of the whole estate is this dome-shaped structure referred to as the temple. The blue and white building had a golden dome. And what is housed inside? No one is really sure. There have been many conspiracy theories about the temple. Some people suggest that it was a place of abuse, while others think it was a site for satanic rituals. A lot of the conspiracies also revolve around the fact that this temple may have a hidden underground area. A former contractor of the estate came forward to describe the complex in his own words and stated that the temple had a door with a lock on the outside, which seemed quite bizarre. But other popular publishers believe that it is merely a music room where Epstein would go out to play the piano and listen in solitude. It is a far stretch, but the wealthy people do have a strange way of spending their money. The secrecy surrounding the island was the strongest evidence that showed whatever went on there was not exactly legal. Many people who went out near it for a swim, to visit, or just for a deep dive inside the sea were not allowed near the island. Guards would usher them away if they came too close to the island. Reports suggest that there were about 70 workers present on the island. They were all asked to wear a special uniform and ordered to stay away from Epstein's site. Inside the house, 
Epstein's office was the hallmark of secrecy because of a treasured safe. Not a single worker was allowed inside his office, except for a maid that Epstein trusted enough to let her near his office. Theories suggest that the safe held more than just money. Perhaps it contains a ledger naming all the people who visited the island. You know, big names that he wanted to blackmail. Or maybe the entrance to a secret tunnel. The workers were told to mind their own business, and they kept it that way. A boat would bring them to the island and take them back at the end of the day. Epstein also had an inclination for hidden treasures. Most of the workers would be paid extra money if they could find old plates, bottles, and other similar things thrown by the waves onto the island. They later told the media that they had to do whatever Epstein demanded. It was the motto that ran within the huge mansion. Whatever Jeffrey wants, Jeffrey gets. But the interesting thing is, the workers were made to sign a non-disclosure agreement. This contract forbids them to speak in detail about the work they did inside the structure, even after Epstein's death. Out of fear, no worker has stepped up to talk about the island of sin. Another known fact was that Epstein had powerful friends. From politicians to known celebrities, the list was huge, and many were found occasionally visiting the island. But what they did not know was that they were being spied on. Epstein had hidden cameras in various rooms of the house, People claimed that they were installed so that Epstein could blackmail influential personalities with inappropriate footage in case they go against him. This video library of secrets allowed Epstein to skim through the videos, find key moments of the guests he was allowed on his island, and use them to make an influential hold on the stage. This horrifying but smart surveillance system was one of the reasons the island remained an uncovered mystery. People refused to talk about it, and the allegations against the friends of Epstein kept growing with each passing day. The crimes of Jeffrey Epstein. Even if the workers and the influential personalities do not reveal all that happened in this forsaken place, the island itself can reveal a lot. It is a chilling crime scene that provides insights into what illegal activities used to happen inside. Many victims and lawyers have helped in revealing what used to go on the island. In 2005, a girl came forward with an allegation that Epstein had inappropriately engaged with her. She was brought to the house through a female acquaintance in hopes of getting a job. But when the girl arrived at the house, a simple piece of work in exchange for money became an act of abuse. This statement by the victim forced the authorities to look deeper into the claim and unveil the bigger truth hiding at the mansion. About 17 victims and five alleged victims were brought to the investigation to discuss the crimes that went on at the house. One girl stated that it was not just an amateur operation. She revealed that Epstein headed an intricate web and a network of misdeeds. It had become sort of a cult that had spread out far from the nation and into the international waters. Many females would befriend girls who were homeless, in trouble with their finances, or struggling. Then, in exchange for financial security, they would be brought to the house and be forced into inappropriate and illegal acts. The females who would lure the girls in would be paid generously for their disturbing assistance. Some airport staff and workers on the island did come out much later, saying they witnessed the transportation of victims, but did not know to whom to complain. Plus. The guests who would arrive at the island came without proper documentation. A huge red flag. Epstein's alleged girlfriend was also accused of being an integral part of the international trafficking ring. This also sparked interest among internet detectives on whether the guy who poses himself as a wealthy financier is part of a much bigger ordeal. Epstein's connections with influential figures were also a thorn in the side of powerful individuals. The British royalty, politicians, intelligence agents, and even celebrities were part of this whole operation. All this was uncovered by the various documents found later on the island. Did his powerful connections allow Epstein to run all of these operations? Or was he the guy who took all the blame while other people could carry on with their own crimes? That's a question we should all be asking. The next development came when Steve Scully, an IT worker, came forward with his own shocking set of statements. He revealed that he used to run maintenance checks on the phone lines occasionally. During his visits, 
he would see inappropriate photos covering most of the house and would sometimes find victims with Epstein. He also claimed that he saw personalities from the British royalty there as well, engaging in illegal acts. However, the interviews of the many leaders made it clear that they are going to keep silent about all these allegations. As the pressure kept mounting up, something had to be done. Hence, the authorities finally pulled the witnesses' statements and gathered other evidence to start a detailed investigation into the island and its owner. The FBI had gathered adequate information on Epstein to put him in jail and start a trial. He was initially charged with solicitation by the jury. The authorities even put together a 53-page indictment to reveal the horrors of the billionaire and ultimately put him behind bars. But his lawyers managed to get a plea deal for their extremely wealthy client and crushed the hopes of the FBI to bring down the billionaire. Instead of a more severe punishment, he only received 18 months in jail after pleading guilty to a much lesser charge of solicitation. But the world was shocked at how much privilege he received during his time in jail. He would be allowed to leave for 12 hours a day and did not even serve the whole sentence. He got out after only 13 months in jail. This shows the kind of power and influence Epstein had within the system. Epstein's death. On August 6th, Epstein was once again arrested by the authorities. However, a few days later, he died. He was in jail, awaiting the consequences of his horrible actions. A little while before his trial, he was found dead inside his cell with bedsheets tied around his neck. The authorities ruled it a suicide, but the internet does not buy it to date. The world believes that the billionaire faked his own death. It is so eerie seeing how well planned out it all was. The night before Epstein's death, his cellmate was transferred. The cameras that were pointing at Epstein's cell somehow malfunctioned and could not store footage of his alleged suicide. Similarly, the guards who used to check up on Epstein every 30 minutes since his stay in the prison did not check the night before he was found dead. The guards were also found to have falsified the reports for their negligence. But another interesting outlook on the matter was that Epstein's defense lawyers called out the suicide as murder. Their claims suggest that Epstein had broken cervical bones, which were not consistent with someone who hangs themselves to death. Seeing that he had died before the trial, the authorities were determined to keep the investigation going. The FBI pulled a raid on the island two days after Epstein was found unconscious in his cell. Everything looked normal on Little St. James Island in 2019. The water was blue, the winds were soaring, and the island was still the center of attention. However, there were some uninvited guests, the FBI. The workers did not expect this raid to occur on the island. They claimed that they had been expecting a visit for years, but not after Epstein's death. The raid was carried out to gather as much evidence as the authorities could, so the case could go on even after Epstein's death. Epstein had multiple accusations building against him for years, and the authorities had finally decided to get to the crux of the matter. During the raid, FBI agents found multiple puzzling pathways inside the house. One of the secret doors led from the back of the house to the inside, and they suspected that it was from there that the victims were taken inside. A pathway was created from the kitchen that headed straight into the master bedroom. A lot of the rooms inside the building had a large number of inappropriate photos attached to the walls, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. FBI officers searched every inch and corner of the island. Hidden far from the public eye and even from the near passers-by, there was a small entrance that led to a chamber. Suspecting the worst, the FBI officers slowly made their way down the stairs, each step making them anxious about the horrors they would find inside, and the worst of their fears lay open in front of them. The chamber did not have any proper source of illumination. A dim light spread out in the entirety of the chamber, making it harder to see for the officers. But even the dim light was not enough to hide the illegal activities of various powerful leaders of the world. A lot of pictures were extracted by the officers that displayed unimaginable acts being carried out by different influential personalities. But that was not all. There was a whole network of tunnels that ran underground. They all ultimately led to the main property on the island. Is Jeffrey Epstein still alive? 
After Epstein's death, his autopsy pictures were disclosed to the public, and the calls for a fake death were far greater than both murder and suicide. People on the internet had a lot of concerns about how Epstein died. They claimed that there were discrepancies, and so they put on their magnifying glasses and told the world their version of the truth. The pictures showed Epstein's nose was slightly different from how his real nose is. His nose is straight and pointy, while in the pictures it appeared curved. Plus, his ears did not match Epstein's physical profile either. To see if the conspiracies were right, two YouTubers, Jeff Berwick and Luke Rudkowski, decided to go and check the structure for themselves after the death of Epstein. They convinced a local to drop them off at the island and hopped on a boat to make the journey. Upon arrival, they saw that the whole estate was properly maintained, which was quite eerie since the island should have been abandoned by now. But the grass was cut, the pools were clean, and even the temple was freshly painted. What they found out about the temple was interesting. It had no hole at the top where the dome was, although a dome is usually installed on top of a hole in most buildings. They also reported that the temple had to be the cheapest structure on the property. It was something that they could have built themselves and resembled a Hollywood set, a facade for something inside. The temple had a lift mechanism too. Why was there a need for a lift when there was allegedly no underground area to visit? The vloggers found no evidence of secret tunnels, unlike the many wild theories over the internet. The FBI might have closed it after their raid. But the YouTubers did catch footage of various digging equipment stationed at the property, excavators and concrete trucks. Now, the construction might have needed heavy machinery, but years later, after the complex was built, their presence seems unnecessary. A sundial was also present at the complex, which was pretty strange. Moreover, the pathways were covered in smaller rocks, making it hard to walk on the island with bare feet. There were a lot of weird satanic gargoyles, too, that were present all around the property. Most of the furniture was made of expensive animal hides and different animal parts, but that is true for any wealthy home's structure. After their arrival, they were on the island for 30 long minutes exploring the property. They did claim to catch a strange vibe in the air. The whole property was too clean. But here is another interesting thing that happened. The two YouTubers had a friend present outside for a lookout. He called them up, and with some miracle, Rudkowski got a signal and picked up the call. Their friend reported that there were screams near the island, and a lot of people were pulling up in golf carts, moving around haphazardly. This was the cue for the YouTubers to run barefoot and to escape the island as fast as they could. Luckily, they managed to get away without being cornered by anyone. Could it have been someone there? Now, one thing is clear. Even if Epstein was alive, it is highly unlikely that he would go back to the place that has become a public crime scene. Yet there are videos like this one showing someone who looks eerily similar to Epstein on Little St. James well after the man supposedly died in his cell. Is the Island of Sin becoming a resort after Epstein's death? it was decided that the state was owed about $105 million in claims. It was decided after the legal battle ran for three long years. The sale of the islands was inevitable, and it was decided that half of the money from the sale would go to the territorial government. It is reported that by the year 2022, the estate paid about $121 million to the 136 victims. Apart from the settlement money, the estate also had to pay for the damages done to the wildlife and the environment. It is reported that the islands were carved out to construct whatever Epstein demanded. He would build whatever he wanted without paying much heed to the regulations. Both islands had suffered significant damage due to the transformation. Coral reefs and wildlife were part of the island's attraction but their suffering was balanced by a huge payout by the estate. According to reports, a billionaire named Stephen Deckoff decided to buy the property in May 2023. The founder of Black Diamond Capital Management bought both islands for $60 million after they were on the market for a whole year. The islands were worth $55 million each, but the bad reputation and the long stay in the market helped Deckoff bag both the properties at a much lesser rate. By 2025, 
the island is expected to have turned completely anew. The new owner plans to turn the islands into a huge resort area. The structure already has many swimming pools and guest rooms, along with various other amenities. The property currently extends to more than 230 acres combined. Still, it is yet to be seen whether the resort would attract any visitors from far and behind. That is all for this video on the famous Jeffrey Epstein Island, a place of sin and evil that got exposed way too late. What do you think about the whole deal? Do you think Epstein is still alive and well living on the island he so lovingly bought? Or do the conspiracy theorists just want something to munch on? Would you visit the island resort knowing about the horrors that happened on that land? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button to give us a token of your appreciation. While you are at it, do hit the subscribe button so that we can keep bringing new and exciting videos for you. Until next time, stay safe.